The NBA season finally starts tomorrow and everyone's coming out with their top 100 list, their top best players. ESPN just came out with their list and it's f***ing terrible. It's awful. It is the worst list ever. So we decided we need to rank our top 25 players in the NBA. And this is going to be projecting for this season. It's not the top 25 players now. This is the top 25 players by the end of the season. Before we rank the top 25 players in the NBA, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you never miss out on any new videos. All right, let's get it started at 25. Who did you have? I put Wemby. Wemby, okay. I, I like what I've seen in preseason. We just released that video about him on Friday. I've seen enough. I think by the end of the season, he's going to be a top 25 player. I put Paul George, and I almost thought about just not having him on my list. I think this year he kind of regresses a bit, but as a two-way player, he can still hit the three ball. I think he's good enough to still be in the top 25. See, I put Paul George at 24. I, I still really like Paul George. He's always been one of my favorite players in the NBA to watch. He's just got such a smooth game. I'm not ready to give up on him just yet. I still think he's going to be fine. 24, I had De'Aaron Fox. Maybe some people would have him higher. He's a solid player. Made his first all-star team. I think he's kind of peaked as a player a bit. I know he's only 25. So I think 24 is a good spot for him. For 23, I had to put Trey Young. I think he could be a guy where I wouldn't be surprised if he's top like almost 15 or like 17 range, or maybe he's not even in the top 25, but I think he has a bit of a bounce back here. I put Jamal Murray. The NBA's in trouble if Jamal Murray can ever translate his playoff performance to the regular season. Like, I don't know what it is about the postseason, but this dude just comes to play. Murray's also been one of those guys I've just always been a fan of. I'm thinking he takes that next step to like all-star level player this year. 22, I actually put Trey Young here. I, I've never been the biggest fan of Trey Young, but it's undeniable. I think that he's a top 25 player. My biggest problem with him, he is a complete negative on defense, but he's a great distributor and he's a great scorer. 22, I had Mikel Bridges. Mikel Mikel Bridges is having a breakout year this year, and I was even tempted to maybe put him in the top 20, but you look what he did in Brooklyn, 26 points a game on better efficiency. I think he takes another leap this year. See, I feel like I'm putting all of your favorites higher than you are, because I had Bridges at 21. What? Damn, okay. I, I, I like Bridges. I mean, he gives you 27 a game, or at least that's what he did with Brooklyn. He's a great defender. I mean, you're high on Trey, you're high on Bridges, and I put him higher than both of you. Well, 21 is where I had Big Vic. Oh. I think... Okay. He's just that good already. At least from the preseason, what we've seen, we just made the video on him. I think he's that good already. Cracking the top 20, I got Jamal Murray. I mean, just based off the playoffs last year, the finals, I couldn't put him any lower. I think he can make the all-star game. He's a top 20 player come playoff time. I'm gonna gone a little low with 20 because I put Bam at 20. My, my problem with Bam is that he's very clearly the second best player on his team. So I struggle to put him higher than a lot of the guys coming up that are gonna be the best players on their team. But he's 20 points per game. He's nine boards a game. He's a great defender. So I had to put him at 20. Well, I had Bam at 19. Okay. I had to give him the respect as a versus versatile defender, what he's done for the Heat, leading them to the finals or helping lead to the finals with Jimmy. I had to give him some respect, so I put him at 19. 19, I put Donovan Mitchell. Look, again, Mitchell's a guy I've always really liked. I love watching him play, but he has to drop a couple spots down because of that series loss to the Knicks. Like, if you look at the teams on paper, I think the Cavs are clearly better. Mitchell did not play very well in the playoffs. He's a great scorer, but I'd love to see him diversify his game a little bit from being just a pure scorer. Yeah, I put Mitchell at 18. I agree with everything you just said. You got to criticize him a bit for that playoff loss. He's a tough player to grade. He's a great scorer, but... That's that's kind of all he is. Yeah, I don't think you can have him any higher. 18, I had De'Aaron Fox. I love the Kings. I'm so happy the Kings are finally having success. That fan base waited for almost two decades to see a team that actually is going to be a contender. I'm really hoping Fox can take another step, get them to the conference semifinals, maybe even the conference finals. 17, I put Jaw at 17. Now he takes a huge hit because he's going to miss 25 games. Even still though, I've never been super high on Jaw. I'm not in love with his game. To me, he's, you know, another 
better Derrick Rose. He's not a great jump shooter. He's incredible to watch. He's incredible to watch. But the fact that he's going to miss 25 games, you have to worry about off the court stuff with him. So, you know, maybe he'll prove me wrong. But I mean, I said in our predicting every team in three words video, I didn't think the Grizzlies are going to make the playoffs. So I can't put him higher than 17. I had him at 17 as well. Oh, I feel okay. like that's a perfect spot as a scorer. He can still take over games. We saw that in the playoffs against the Lakers, but he's not really great on the defensive end. He doesn't have a great jump shot, like you said. So I think that's a good spot. At least we didn't put him at like 30-ish. Exactly. Like, like ESPN did. Number 16 is where I put Anthony Edwards. He's another player where he's so tough to judge how he's going to be. ESPN had him at what? Like 12? Which I think is way too high, at least for now. But I do think he'll have a breakout season. I put Kawhi at 16. I feel like this is the last gasp for Kawhi and Paul George. Like, if they can't, I mean, make the conference finals. I, obviously, they want to make the NBA finals. They want to win a championship. But, like, it's so crazy to think about Kawhi like two, three years ago. People were talking about him as like a top five player. Now it's like, is he top 15? I don't think so. 15, this might be a bit of a reach, but it is, this is a projection. I put Zion okay. at 15. I am betting the over on whatever his games played is for this year. I think Zion is gonna be healthier. Is he playing all 82 games? No chance. Is he playing 75? Probably, Probably not. not. Is he gonna hit the 65 game minimum? I don't think so, but I think he's playing 50 to 60 games. I think he gives you 28 points per game, seven boards a game, and I think he's leading the Pelicans back to the playoffs. Add Zion at 15 as well, and I think when he's fully healthy, he's out there balling out. He's borderline top 10. That well, isn't always happening. I was gonna say, that's the problem. <laughs> that is the problem, but when he's out there doing it, he's around the top 10, so I thought 15 is a good spot. 14 is where I put Kawhi. When Kawhi, another guy, when he's fully healthy, when he's out there, he's elite. I mean, we saw what? It was like the one game in the playoffs he balled out. So when he's out there doing his thing, again, another borderline top 10 guy. But again, it just really doesn't happen that often. I put Anthony Edwards at 14. I didn't quite put him at 12 like ESPN did, but I'm high on Anthony Edwards. He played really well with Team USA. I was really impressed watching him play there. I feel like the Timberwolves are finally going to realize like it's not Gobert's team. It's not Cat's team. This is Anthony Edwards' team. They're going to give him the green light. I think he averages 30 this year. Also, I just recently watched him in that one Netflix movie with Adam Sandler and <laughs> he was quite good in that movie. So okay. I'm giving him a little extra props for that. 13, I had AD. Now, there's so many dudes on this list like, well, when they're healthy, they're great. And AD, when he's healthy, is phenomenal. Sometimes. There are also those games where he's healthy where he just plays like ass. So my problem with AD, he's great occasionally. He's just not consistent enough. So, I mean, I've seen people putting him like in the top 10. I can't go quite that high for someone where I don't know, even when they are healthy, if they're going to give me a consistent effort. Yeah, I agree. I had AD at 13 as well. And again, he had that stretch last year where he was just dominant. He, he was the best like, player in the world. Yeah, he was a top five player, best player in the world, maybe. And then the playoffs, he was still probably the best defensive player in the playoffs. But it was like every other game, he'd have a great game. Then he'd have an awful game. The consistency is just not there. Number 12 is where I had Shea, and I don't want to hate on him, but yeah, you do a little bit. He, the problem is, it's not his fault, but he's the most overrated player in the league right now. ESPN had him at eight. I think that's insane. He's obviously super efficient. He's a great scorer. He's better on defense than a lot of the guards up on this list, but I just can't put him any higher at this point. He hasn't even been in the playoffs yet. I put Dame at 12. I think Dame this year is going to be the best number two in the league by a long shot. I think playing with Giannis, not only is going to do wonders for Giannis, I think it's going to do wonders for Dame. But again, I kind of had this problem where I can't put Dame, as much as I love him, higher than guys that I think are going to be the best player on their team. Actually, looking at my list now, I say that I put Devin Booker at 11. Hmm. <laughs> you know what? We'll swap those two. Book's at 12. Dame's at 11. How about okay, that? fine. For 11, that's where I put Dame. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Dame, he's coming off the best season of his career, even though the Blazers didn't make the playoffs and didn't really end up leading to anything, but he was still Still absolutely insane. Some of the games he put up the 71, ridiculous. I think with Giannis now, actually playing with another superstar is going to make his life just so much easier. I was going to say, we were trash, but it wasn't his fault. Right. Now cracking the top 10, we got Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler, another guy so hard to place because you look at his stats and you're like, eh, that's not really impressive at all. But then the dude somehow keeps going to the finals. So you got to give him his credit. I think 10's a good spot. I couldn't put him any higher, but Jimmy cracks the top 10. 
10. Couldn't agree with you more. He's also number 10 for me. I, yeah, the stats aren't there, but you can't deny it. He makes the finals. Even when he doesn't make the finals, generally he goes past the first round, sometimes to the conference finals. He shows out big time in the playoffs. So Jimmy, got to put him at 10. Number nine, this one's a, probably going to be the big shocker, is Luka Doncic. Whoa. I am a big time Luka hater. Look, is he a great player? Yes. Is he great to watch on offense? Yes. Does he have great stats? Absolutely. I need his team to play better. And I, I get that his team isn't great, but if you're a top 10 player in the world, I need you to make the playoffs. And you said that they're not making the playoffs. So, I mean, I, I'm not quite there, but the way they finished last year to me, when you have Luka and then Kyrie Irving, and I get they don't work supremely well together, but when you got those two guys, you at the very least need to make the playoffs or the play in. At number nine, I had LeBron James, and this one hurts. Oh. Because I hope... I hope I'm wrong. I hope LeBron's somehow the best player in the league. But at this point, you got to rank him a little bit lower. Maybe he gets that foot healed and everything's fine. But for now, I got him at nine. Okay. At my number eight spot, I put Kevin Durant. Ooh. Kevin Durant, you know, he could be higher up. He's coming off one of the most efficient seasons of his career, but I think Kevin Durant is actually going to be the number two this year in Phoenix. Really? I think it's Devin Wh Booker's team. Whoa! We saw that in the playoffs. Devin Booker was the number one guy, so I think KD is going to take the back seat. And he's going to be the number two. See, you said ESPN was crazy for putting Shea at number eight, but I also put him at number <laughs> of eight. Of course. <laughs> Look, I am very high on Shea Gildas Alexander. I'm very high on the Oklahoma City Thunder just as a whole. I said I thought they would be a top four seed. Are people overrating him a little bit? I mean, maybe, but I tell you what, I, I haven't seen the odds yet, but I think he's the best odds for Dark Horse MVP candidate by far. Number seven, I put Joel Embiid, and maybe I'm a prisoner of the NBA playoffs, but holy sh**. I am not going to keep putting Embiid as a top five player when he keeps playing like dog ass <laughs> in the NBA playoffs. I'm sorry. That's completely fair. I wasn't willing to rank him that low yet. So I had Tatum. Tatum's a guy where I don't even know what to say about him. Like <laughs> he puts up the numbers. He puts up 30 points a game now. He plays elite defense. You'd think this guy's a top five player, but for, there's just something about him. He just doesn't have where he's not good enough to be a top five player. Yeah, I put Tatum at six. It's so weird that a guy that averages 30 points, nine rebounds, and basically five assists, and it still feels like he has another level he hasn't gotten to. Like, it still feels like there's so much room for him to grow, but, I mean, I think he's better than Embiid at this point. That game seven against Embiid put up 51 points. The end of game six where he was hitting those clutch threes, like, I think people are a little too low on Tatum, but I do agree. It, it's so weird that it feels like he still has so much more that he can get better at. Yeah, that's a fair point. I still had Embiid at six because, I don't know, he was still the MVP. You look at the regular season stats, he's putting up 33 points a game. One of the better interior defenders in the league, too, so I couldn't rank him any lower. But then you look at the playoff stats, he's putting up, like, 23 points a game. He needs to do something in the playoffs this year, but I couldn't quite rank him any lower coming off that MVP season. At number five, that's where I book. Mm. I literally wow, number think, five. I think I think Devin Booker by the end of the season will be a top five player in the league. In the playoffs, it doesn't get brought up enough. He was the best player in the playoffs. I guess Jokic was probably a bit better. But if you look at just purely stats, the dude balled the hell out. He's an underrated defender. I think by the end of the season, Devin Booker's a top five player. I had LeBron James at number five. Now, I get it. He's old. He's the oldest player in the league. And I get health is an issue. He's got to get his foot right. He's probably not going to play more than 60 games. But I mean, just looking down the list, like Tatum and Bede, Shea, Luka, Jimmy, Book, Dame, AD, all the guys I rank below him. I'm taking LeBron over all those guys. He's still an incredible scorer. He's still a good rebounder. He's a great distributor. He's a good team defender. He's not really a great individual defender because he's old as dirt. But I'm taking LeBron as a top five player. I am. Number five four, I got Kevin Durant. I'm I'm not fully buying into Book being better than Durant. I still think Durant is going to be the number one guy consistently for the Phoenix Suns. Had one of the better seasons of his career. He's insanely efficient, like you said. 56% from the field, 40% from three. I think the full training camp, they got the full new team there with him, with Book, with Beal. I think Durant is going to have another great year. I don't think they're going to win the title, but I think Durant is going to be the number one guy for the Phoenix Suns. Number four, I got Luka. And like you said earlier, I don't have them making the 
playoffs. So this is kind of weird. Like where I put Luke in there, you should expect a top four player makes the playoffs. But I also think the West is that stack. Luca, I mean, just offensively, the load he carries, everything he can do, he can distribute, shoot, get to the bucket, get to the line. I think he's a top four player. And if they are a good team, watch out for an MVP run this year. Number three, and I think we're going to have the same top three from here on out. I think so. <laughs> Steph Curry. I mean, he's the only player outside of the top two that I think you can make a case for the best player in the league still. His shooting ability, and I'm super excited to see him play more off ball with Chris Paul this year. That opens him up a lot. He is getting a bit older, but for now, I think I have to have him at number three. Yeah, I still got Steph too. I mean, he's, he's still a threat the second he walks over half court. You have to know exactly where he is at all time. I think his roster is really going to hurt him. Like, how good is a guy like Clay still at this point? How good is Draymond? How will Chris Paul fit? They're all very old, as you would know if you watched our predicting every team <laughs> in three words or less. Ben's was too f- old. So they're super old, but Steph, as of now, I think he's still got it. Number two is Giannis. Coming off a career high 31.1 points per game, I think and people have said it before, but the addition of Dame to that roster is going to be a godsend. A guy who can get his own shot, a guy who can stretch the floor, force defenders to commit to him far beyond the three-point line. The pick and roll that they're going to have is going to be insane. And Giannis, could he push Jokic for that best player in the league? Maybe. Spoiler alert, Jokic is number one by far. (laughs) But Could Giannis push him for that? I think so. Yeah, Giannis at two for me as well. The pick and roll obviously is going to be so deadly. The spacing with Dame out there is going to help a lot. And really, the Bucks picked up a closer. I know Middleton had been that in the past, but he's regressed a lot these past couple years. Having a closer out there to help Giannis, because that's not his natural ability, is going to help him a ton. And yeah, you never know. Giannis, by the end of the season, could be the best player in the league. Now for number one, I mean, obviously, it's Nikola Jokic. That playoff run last year is still underrated. Like, you look at the stats, the triple doubles, everything he was doing. He's the best passer in basketball. He's got to be the best offensive player, an elite rebounder. The pick and roll game with him is so dangerous. What else is there to really say? The thing about Jokic at this point, you can look at every other player in the NBA. Jokic is the only one, I think, that doesn't have a weakness. What does he not do well? He shoots well. He scores in the paint. He can score from the mid-range. He can pass. He For a big, he can dribble. And in the playoffs, he proved he can hold his own on defense. Yeah. Like, he's the only player in the league that doesn't have a weakness. So what do you guys think? What is your top 25 in the NBA? If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving a like. And hey, while you're here, check out some of our other content as well. And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.